the students had gathered together outside of the city walls of Ishgard. This was to be the first class on the magic of astromancy. Yet it was cloudy, with their teacher nowhere to be seen. A dusk steadily gave way to night. The students looked at each other, wondering if a class had been called off due to the weather. Eventually, a friendly voice called to them as a robed figure approached. It was their instructor, who regretted making them wait so long in the cold. Even though the students were relieved to see they'd not been waiting for too long, they looked toward the sky and sighed, asking if the class had to be rescheduled. Their instructor laughed and shook their head. They explained just because the clouds had moved in, the stars were still there, and they always would be. No matter how bright the day is, or how clouded the nights become, these magnificent celestial bodies that dot the heavens are always there, watching us, and prepared to give us their guidance. We need only hearken to their words. Just then, their teacher pulled an astroglobe off their back, and various cards began to dance around it. This simple spectacle already had their young apprentices in awe, but what came next left them speechless. As their teacher lifted their globe high above them, a shower of light began to bathe the area around them and their students. Various stars and constellations shimmered and danced around them, with comets racing between each. The students marveled at this display as their instructor began their lesson, explaining the soothing grace and wrathful destruction the heavens could provide. As they continued, the lights of their spell began to dim and fade. But what the students hadn't noticed is during this lesson, the clouds had parted, and the gates to the heavens laid before them. They looked up, and everything their instructor had revealed was there before them. Their teacher smiled, explaining that it was time to begin their lesson in earnest. Power, like life, takes all sorts of shapes and forms. It could be used to bring ruin and devastation, but also nurture and mend. Today, we'll be addressing a school of magic that understands these things better than most. With perspective being seen as a key to enlightenment, this profession has the benefit of observing reality from the position of a small speck in the universe to massive celestial bodies. Today, let us unravel the mysteries of the stars and heavens. Today, let us discuss what it means to be an astrologian. The races of man have ever gazed up at and reveled beneath the starry sky since time can remember. People have always stargazed and believed that these celestial bodies were windows to the heavens and possible futures, but without any proof. Even the cards that astrologians now use were seen as a toy for children at best and a tool for con artists at worst. However, astromancy, as we know it, didn't begin until the early 200s of the 6th Astral Era. While the nation of Old Charlian was still young, a powerful mage named Lufon began a 20-year study on the subjects of astrology and astronomy. His original goal was to separate the facts from fiction and educate everyone on the true nature of the stars and their constellations. But it was during this research that he made unprecedented discoveries. It's true that people had ever used the stars to try and predict the future or define themselves with little to no accuracy, though what he discovered shook him, as not everything he found was completely without merit. Like discovering the pieces to a bigger puzzle, Lufon's research continued year after year, progressing in ways he didn't think imaginable. Finally, he realized that the principles of stargazing was actually based in arcane theory, and this fundamentally shifted the focus of his research. Instead of trying to break astrology down, he was building it back up with the truths he was polishing. His research expanded, collecting all the knowledge he could on the gods known as the Twelve, and if their influence did in fact exist. He discovered that the stars, their placements, and the constellations that they formed weren't without purpose. Like the spell circles and glyphs that an arcanist makes use of, the constellations themselves were like giant spell runes, and as such, power could be drawn from them, through meditation and focus 
Lufon successfully attuned his personal aether to these celestial bodies, and was able to use them as a source of power for his spellcraft. After realizing what he had control of, he took the fundamentals of his discoveries and reconstructed them. As a result, the arcane school we call astromancy was born. Lufon's discoveries and new arcane profession couldn't be discredited by old Charlian. Even the cards that were argued as useless were submitted for study, and when used by someone attuned to the heavens, it was proven that the cards did in fact reveal the possibilities of beneficial and unfortunate futures. Thusly, this school of magic has been held in high regard in Old Charlene since its creation, and those who practice this form of star weaving are known as astrologians. Whether you believe that astromancy was a lost art and was simply rediscovered, or believe that no one had the complete picture until Lufon's research, no one can deny the potency and power that is at an astrologian's disposal. That is the complete origin of Charlian astrology, and by extension, that of the modern astrologian's existence. The reason it's always referred to as Charlian astrology, specifically, is because any other form of stargazing is considered just that. Stargazing. For example, the astronomers of Ishgard never used magic or attuned to the heavens to aid in their predictions. Back when the Charlian settlement was being built in the Dravanian hinterlands, an Ishgardian named Audnell the Younger discovered how Charlian astrology could predict the dragon's behaviors by observing the dragon star. However, that's all he took from them. He wasn't interested in the power the universe could offer or the wisdom it possessed. He was fixated only on what the dragon star said about the Dravanians and their movements. It wasn't until recently that true astrologians from Charlian have begun to teach and remind Ishgard about the roots of their practice, and how much more they'd understand if they opened themselves up to the possibilities. This of course is in spite of the fact that there are groups within Old Charlian that believe astromancy to be a magic that only Charlians should have. Now that we've covered their origins and basic principles, let's go over their powers and abilities. Like stated earlier, an astrologian draws their power exclusively from the stars in the sky. By successfully meditating and focusing on the nature of the heavens and their respective constellations, one can attune their personal aether to the stars and act as a receptacle for their power. Indeed. This not only means that Aether exists outside our star, but it can be tapped into and used for spells. By doing this, an astrologian doesn't use their own Aether or the Aether of the world. They only use the power that can be gained from outside of it. It's true that Aether that escapes one star and makes its way to ours is almost undetectable, but the multiple strands of Aether from many stars combined with their positions with one another, amplifies their power, turning into a reliable source for magic. This gives their spells an otherworldly feel, yet it's every bit as powerful as other arcane schools of our world. The powers of an astrologian fall into two categories. The first is celestial magic, or astromancy, as it is commonly called. With the aether they gained from the heavens, many of an astrologian's spells mimic the nature of celestial bodies. By attuning to the universe's potential energies, one can make use of the powers of creation and any world's natural defenses. Because of this, most of an astrologian's spells possess curative and protective qualities. However, that which creates can also destroy. By attuning to the more ruinous side of the universe, an astrologian is able to simulate the birth of stars to harm and burn their enemies. They're even able to create temporary wells of gravity to condense and rip apart multiple opponents at once. The second half of an astrologian's power is that of the arcana. The arcana refers to the cards that are always at an astrologian's disposal. Originally, these cards were seen as a gag, but when in the hands of a skilled astrologian, there's so much more. 
when properly attuned to their constellations, have the properties of accurate fortune telling. The six primary cards and their respective heavens are as follows. The bowl, which is the first heaven, represents the element of earth. The balance, which is the second heaven, represents the element of fire. The spire is the third heaven and is possessed of the element of lightning. The arrow, representing the fourth heaven, guides the element of wind. The ewer is home to the fifth heaven and that of the element of water. And finally, the spear, which is the sixth heaven and represents the essence of ice. There is a seventh heaven, but to successfully attune to it would be to go beyond mortal limits, meaning that the mage would die in the process. The best an astrologian can do is beseech the heavens and draw upon the aether of their allies to temporarily open the gates to the seventh heaven, allowing for a miracle, if only for a moment. Rest assured, I'll go into more detail about the twelve and their respective heavens in another lecture. But I digress. This does not mean that the other heavens are without power compared to the seventh. Far from it. The six heavens guide an astrologian's hand, revealing the possible futures that are both beneficial and harmful to not only the mage, but all things around them. When a card is drawn, the astrologian knows exactly what direction something is headed towards, and has the opportunity to twist fate into a more favorable outcome. These minor redirections can avalanche into an infinite amount of possible futures, which is why an astrologian relies on the gaze of the heavens to help guide them. However, this does not mean an astrologian can prevent any and all catastrophes, but they'll have a better idea of where and when it begins in order to save as many souls as they can. Whether you believe in fate or not, you'll find an astrologian's ability to glimpse into the infinite fabric of reality to be uncanny. Let's move on to their choice of weapons and attire. Believe it or not, the astrologian's weapon of choice went through many variations before settling on the planispheres and star globes we see today. For the most part, star reading devices fell into two categories, navigation and divination. During his research, Lufon tried many attempts to marry the two forms into a singular device. The prototypes wouldn't fully realize their potential until Lufon began carving arcane runes into the weapon itself. Like the stars above, specific symbols in particular positions would encourage celestial aether to gather around the weapon, allowing the astrologians to more easily tap into it. Like a planet with gravity, these weapons are constantly drawing in and encouraging celestial aether to flow toward and around the caster, thus bringing the fury of the stars down to the earth. Next, we'll go over their wardrobe. Charlene history is littered with their culture trying to pull in and make use of all sorts of cultural factors from around the world. Because of this, the early astrologian attire actually closely resembles that of black mages as well as other disciplines of magic. It wasn't until the school began to evolve on its own that we begin to see the robes getting decorated with stars, moons, and other celestial ornaments to distinguish themselves. Some sets of attire still possess that black mage heritage, while other sets are designed to resemble fortune tellers from different cultures around the world. Because of these appropriated designs, the ornaments on an astrologian's robes are the only consistency between them all. Yet no matter what culture or time period their robes are inspired by, an astrologian decorates their garb with pride, showing their eagerness to act as envoy for the stars. And that, my friends, covers the history, powers, and appearance of the group of mages we call astrologians. While their roots go back much further than the nation of Old Charlian, we can safely say that we wouldn't possess modern astrology if not for Lufon. His tireless research and quest for knowledge not only gave the world an entirely new school of magic, 
but a new method of divining the future as well. To any who walk the path of the astrologian, hear me now. The heavens are but passive observers. They gain nothing from lies and trickery. Put your faith in their guidance, and with celestial might, blaze a path toward a radiant future for us all. That way, maybe our star might act as a guide for others in this vast universe. Hello everyone! Thanks for staying to the end of the lesson. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, subscribe and like this video to let me know I'm doing well. If there is a topic you'd want me to cover in the future, leave a comment about it and I'll see what I can do. Until next we meet, I'll be researching even more of our world's rich lore to share with you. Till then, stay safe my friends!